This here is a lichen. And lichens are sensitive to pollution containing sulfur dioxide, SO2. So this here is a car. And car fumes contain sulfur dioxide, SO2. So the more car fumes are being emitted in an area, the more polluted the air will be. And the more sulfur dioxide will be in the atmosphere. So in areas of high sulfur dioxide pollution, so the more polluted the environment is, you're going to see fewer different species of lichen. So the more polluted the atmosphere is, the fewer different species of lichen there will be. And not only will there be fewer different species of lichen, there will also be fewer lichen themselves. And in more polluted environments, the lichens are going to be smaller, as you can see here. So there'll be smaller lichens. And in a highly polluted environment, you're going to get very crusty lichens. And you'll recognize these lichens here if you live in a the city. These are the lichens that you'll see here because they can survive high levels of sulfur dioxide, whereas the other ones are so sensitive to sulfur dioxide that they can't grow. So in areas like this where there is low sulfur dioxide in the air, low sulfur dioxide in the air, you can get more species of lichen. So you'll see different species of lichen. Also see more lichens, so you'll see more of them. And you'll see larger lichens. So the less polluted the environment is, the larger the lichens will be. And in really unpolluted areas, with almost zero sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere, you'll see really large bushy lichens, like in this image here. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. This is a factory that's being built next to a really clean body of water in a lake. And this is the lake that contains the clean water. And inside this lake, you're going to find many invertebrates that indicate that the water is clean. And these include shrimps and stonefly larva. And this is what shrimps and stonefly larva look like here. This factory could put its raw sewage into the water illegally. And it also puts some fertilizer into the water. So due to eutrophication, which is the overall decrease in oxygen levels in the water, you can see algae forming on the top of the lake. You can see algae forming on the top of the lake. This will cause a decrease in oxygen levels in the lake. So these invertebrate species are sensitive to oxygen concentration in the water. So there is a decrease in oxygen concentration in the water that's going to lead to the numbers of shrimps and stonefly larvae decreasing. And then that's going to cause an increase in numbers of bloodworms and sludge worms. This is because they are not as sensitive to oxygen in the water. So bloodworms and sludge worms are indicators of polluted water, whereas shrimps and stofly larva are indicators of clean water. This is because shrimps and stonefly larva are sensitive to oxygen levels dissolved in water. So there's increased pollution or increased levels of algae due to eutrophication. That's going to reduce the oxygen levels in the water, causing there to be an increased number of bloodworms and sludge worms because they're better adapted to surviving in lower oxygen concentrations than shrimp and stonefly larva. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Press pause to practice using those key words. The answers will follow. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. And if you're stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes.